Mind you, we swore an oath of loyalty and trust. It's not more speeches in the Senate that will change the world. Rome is dying. My legions are mustering as swiftly as possible. Senators, welcome back to episode 45 of my Stellaris Roman Empire campaign. In the last episode, we finished off the vassals in the southwestern part of the galaxy, concentrating all the remaining enemy forces into just one quadrant. However, in this total war, we've grown quite rapidly and have amassed over 1,500 pops just from the occupation of other worlds. This is overloading our administration and the Empire's bureaucracy is slowing down rapidly. Now, vast amounts of population have been transported around the galaxy to ease this transition and the new administration centers are being built across the ring worlds of Hellas while we decide the fate of these species. Now with a temporary lull in the combat, the plan is to bring our fleets together on the star field of Mars and create a new powerful force that will allow us to take the fight to the Awakened Empires directly. So if we take a look at the diplomatic map mode, we can see that now our enemies just reside in this one corner. We have four in total. The Corinth Restorers, who have the vassal of the Traxian Empire, against the Carillion Regulators, who have the vassal of the Great Zeltic Combine. This is just one system empire here. Those two are facing off against each other, and we're facing off against both of them, as are the League of Non-Aligned Powers. So, I've decided to recall all of the fleets back to the Starfield of Mars. We're going to give them... Sort of a Tiberian reform, you could kind of call it, maybe. Uh, where we're going to try to kit out the fleets as best as possible to counter what the Fallen Empires are throwing my way. Now, I'm not the best at reading stats and knowing the counters of this game, so I'm kind of just wigging it based on kind of my initial impressions of what they're fielding. So we had a look at what they're fielding before. I actually can't see them right now. Our century array is about to be done. But previously, we looked at them, and we saw that they were using a lot of strike craft. And a lot of not stuff that's not so efficient against armor. So I'm loading up heavier on the armor. And I'm loading up heavy on the flak to deal with their strikecraft and more strikecraft herself. And the first way we're doing this is at the mega shipyard. I'm now commissioning the building of new dreadnoughts and new carriers. That are basically being built into the federation fleet. So remember we removed our federation fleet before. So let's go to the designer for it. And uh, the carriers here kitted out with heavy or lots of ravaging swarmers. These things are actually quite interesting. I don't think we've got the technology for it, but someone in our federation probably does and we can build them. I think that's how it works anyway. Either way, I don't recall ever getting it and they cost food to make, which is pretty cool because we've got so much food. It's actually kind of nice that we can put that to use in some fashion. Anyway, they seem to do a huge amount of damage. Now I'm assuming that these guys are gonna be fighting the other strike craft that come their way. We also have some regular interceptor wing strike craft uh, as well, and then we have loads of Iron Cloud Defender flak just screening everything we can in front um, to hopefully protect our Crassus Dreadnoughts. So the Dreadnoughts here are going to be rocking the Grey Goo Warhead Torpedoes, which are doing heavy shield, armor, and hull damage, and then we do a bit worse shield damage using the Dark Matter launchers. So these things are going to be chilling pretty far back and just like bombarding as much stuff as they can. They're using the dimensional wave cannons and the nanite warhead rocket artillery. So we'll see how that performs. Should be quite powerful. We'll get into what we're building in the regular fleet later, but that's what's going to be coming up in the Federation fleet. Like I said, I'm not a huge min-maxer stat guy. It seems to me on the surface of things, this isn't crazy to be building from what I understand. So hopefully it all goes well. To be honest, I probably don't even need the dreadnoughts, but... Federation fleets are free upkeep, so I'm going to be building these heavy ships in there just to kind of not have to worry about upkeeping them so much. So I've commissioned the building of a bunch of them, and uh, they won't take that long to come together and we'll get to try them out soon, or just have a look at them. Alright, and then everything else has been recalled. Of course we have the behemoth planet, uh, planet craft thing that we're kind of trying to mobilize out here and weaponize at Elysium. That's not going to be done for a long while. What I'm hoping to do is get about 3 million fleet power together to challenge their 1.8 million, I think they have. Sounds like enough, but I'm a bit worried because they had like four or five moons 
attack moons, and those things have incredible amounts of hull power. Uh, what's it? He health points. Let's just call them hull points. I keep forgetting what they're called. So I feel like they're just going to be in the combat for a long time. Really powerful. It's a bit deceptive. It's like, yeah, their fleet power is big, but they're also going to last a really long time. You can't one-shot those guys out of it like you can with a battleship. Um, so those things are going to be around for a while. So I think you need overwhelming firepower if you don't want your moons to go down as well. Which we don't, because they take such a long time to come together. Alright, so that's pretty much it. So like I said, everything is being fielded back there. Oh yeah, so in between episodes... We took on like a thousand pops. Insane. All of this territory, if we go back on diplomatic map mode, we can see all the green territory. All this territory is being gained by us directly now. And I've tried to remove as many colonies as I can. Like all these habitats. I took all the pops off these habitats, put them on different planets and things like that. Of course, down here is where we have our penal colony, at Tulianum. And it's getting a little bit better, but it's still pretty bad down here. And some people were saying, don't, don't terraform it. You know, let them rot on their planet or whatever. We're terraforming it to a continental world so that the Romans that live here will be fine. All the other species that come from everywhere else with all their different uh, habit habitual preferences, you could say, you know, they can deal with it. <clears throat> so that's helping out immensely across all the other planets, reducing crime, but still that planet itself is a bit of a tumultuous cesspit of crime and, and other problems. Um, for the other worlds though, Ideally, what we want to do in future is segment off a place of this and partition it so that we create a vassal. Which would be awesome, but we can't do that while we're at war. We're in this war of he war um, of heaven? War in heaven. Yeah, sorry, we're in the war in heaven right now. So we just can't. Uh, we're not allowed. So if, I'll just show you. If you want to create a vassal, it says you must be at peace. So we have to just deal with what we've got um, for a while. Which is why I actually missed the last episode. It took me over an hour to reorganize where all the pops are and stuff. And there's still going to be problems, but for the time being, the ring world at Hellas has been pretty much filled up with pops. Just doing loads of different things. There's no free jobs. We filled this up with 120 pops, 61 here, uh, 71 at Corinth, 47 here, 93, 40, and so on. You get the idea. There's lots. Anywhere that we had districts that they could work like energy jobs, or clerk jobs, farming jobs, all of that stuff. Every single slave slot that we had open, worker slot that we had open, I basically put a slave into. Uh, we, I actually spent like 50,000 energy moving pops. Let's just think of, I mean, each pop to move is about 75 or 100. Just think of how much we've had to move. Thousands. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Which brings me to the next thing, which is a lot of people are debating at the moment whether or not we should be giving uh, pops indentured servitude and I am aware of it people are saying do you not do you not know about that you could just like let them work the second tier of jobs we could do that I don't think it's very Roman to do that which is why I haven't done it but perhaps you guys should decide I don't think I'm quite ready to put that vote out there yet it might be another episode or two before we do it's a tough one there's just I, I just don't want to go into it, but there's a few reasons why I don't want to do that yet. I think in the next episode, though, I'll probably field the question and present the argument about what would happen. Uh, so you can get a better picture of it. What, I'd, what, I'm like, what I would like to happen in future is to actually move a lot, of, um, a lot of these different species out into the southern sectors and partition it so that they're our vassal. And that way... They'll have their own freedoms there, but ultimately, they will be a vassal of us. That's kind of where I'm going with it. Um, but, you know, perhaps we should still put that to the Senate and allow them to discuss it about whether or not they should just reside within our empire anyway, and, you know, we deal with them that way. But it's just, like I said, at the moment, we can't give systems and we can't partition anything, so we're just kind of stuck dealing with all of these pops and really suffering a huge amount of empire sprawl. It's so significant right now that our technology rate cost is costing us twice, two and a half times as much as what it would normally cost. It's 260% uh, from the Empire Sprawl. So it's so heavy right now that it's taking us, yeah, two and a half times longer, I think. Unless that one, first 100% adds on as well. I'm not sure if that does, but if that's the case, then it's even more. Either way, our tech is slowing down rapidly because of that. So I've commissioned the building, like I said, of all these admin worlds and stuff like that. So we'll just have to see if we can kind of catch up to that number. Essentially, we want the number on the right here to catch up to the number on the left. We're at 2,800 to 2,200. So we're 600 uh, admin cap behind our sprawl right now. 
It's the new year, so we're just um, <laughs> transitioning as as it goes. All right, good. So hopefully um, all of that makes sense to everybody. That's all caught up now. I'm just going to hide the sectors, hide the star bases. Don't want to be clicking them. Could crash the game. All right, so the terraforming is taking place on some of these other worlds. That should just ease tensions a bit in some places. The legions are all returning. This attack moon. Yeah, I guess we'll bring the attack moon up as well. Why not? There's combat right now. Oh, yeah, we must have ended while we were in combat with this small pirate. Well, I say small. It's a pirate fleet, but it's one big galleon. It's all corvettes that we were swarming around in, if I recall. Yeah. So that conflict didn't, didn't end itself. This is out in the middle of the kind of Dakarite Fragments territory. That's why it's a, a Dakarite Kirken pirate fleet. Alright, pretty much all done. And done. Okay, good. So that's easy. We'll just go take out their that star base and then leave this all back to them. Alright, cool. So that I mentioned it, right? I, God, my memory is so bad. See, I actually recorded this intro twice. Um, basically just because I messed up saying what I was trying to say, but... Yeah, as I said, we are now commissioning, just to clarify, let's say, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it, but we are now building several Trireme class and Karasis class ships. I know the names don't really make any sense. This is the Federation fleet. So after we removed our Federation fleet of about 200 fleet, uh, thousand fleet power, I think this one's going to be up, up to about 600k or something like that. So that's way more powerful. And we get those level three jump drives that we wanted. So let's have a look at them here. Yeah, level three out of our minds. Actually, I just need to make sure as well. Do we have level three on these guys? No, I just remembered that I'm looking before. So that's Opsius's fleet here. He needs a bit of an upgrade. So let's give him it to get those level three jump drives outfitted on the um, side class ships as well. Allow him to move a bit faster. All right, take out that pirate fleet. No problem. Fleet upgraded. That's the small dragon breath cannons, I think, that are fine. Those little red things. All right. Got some energy and minerals from that. No big deal. Helping out our buddies in the Dakarite fragments. And, uh, yeah, you guys can come back too. So I'm probably going to consolidate a lot of these fleets. We've got a lot of small pockets of corvettes and things like that we don't really necessarily need anymore. So we'll consolidate all that down as well. So, if we were to have a look out by the Corinth Restores, I think also our Sentry Array is almost done. Yeah, 68 days. So once that's done, then we'll be able to see in again. And we can actually see the Carillion Regulators fleet here, so 1.5 million. Don't know if they've got the same. That's what the other guys have. That's their Titan ships. Level 5 out of their minds, a lot of strike craft. Yeah, a lot of strike craft. That's their battle cruisers and then their escorts. They've got a lot of point defense, which makes me a bit worried about using as much missiles as we are. Maybe I should get rid of all the Wraith missiles. Because they do have a lot of point defense. And I'm assuming even things like these can be shot right, shot out of, this, of space. Because they're the G-class. And I'm, ass I'm assuming, at least, that all G-class stuff can be just like shot by point defense. Whereas, that's always the argument for moving to the neutron launchers and stuff and torpedoes. You think that torpedoes wouldn't be, could be shot as well, but they can't. They're the L-class, like large uh, utility slot or whatever you want to call it. Large weapon slot. <clears throat> so they can't be disrupted. So I feel like we should probably try to move away from missiles as well. Maybe I won't use, at the very least, won't use Velites. We'll switch these guys to something else entirely. So they're currently missile boat. Use regular interceptors. <clears throat> Psionic entity projectors. See, I could spend so long doing this. This is why I just don't know what's necessary. They seem like 50-50 on their shields and armor, right? They've got a little bit more shields than armor, slightly. They're using neutron launchers, so point defense isn't a... There's no point using it on them. This is their escorts, and these are the battle cruisers. Again, more on the shields than there is on armor. 
So you want to be dealing that, and then you want to be dealing with the strike craft. That's what I assume anyway. So let's go with, for this Corvette v Velites class, just a ba basic standard thing. Let's load it up with more shield damage capabilities. Spatial distortion cannons, like they're not very high damage, but they do do better against shields, and so do the improved Stormfire. Alright, let's go with two of these. And then something that's good against the armor. Alright, so that's small psionic energy project. That damage is woeful. Is there anything better than that? For dealing with armor. Not really. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll leave it like that then anyway. I don't feel like that's good though, but... And we want something like maybe extra power or more evasion, anything to give us evasion. We have level 3 afterburners here. And this is why people say use auto upgrade. Well, it's like if you had afterburners on these two, it doesn't upgrade to the level 3. And there's similar things going on out here. Like, um, well, I can't show it right now. But if, for instance, if we were like on level 5 power, it just doesn't use the mods very well to upgrade. So auto upgrade doesn't always work. That's why I don't use it. A lot of people keep mentioning that it's like I've said this before I know I know a lot of people probably passively watch this kind of thing but still it's like I I'm not stupid it just doesn't work you gotta go through this sometimes I'm stupid in other ways though like with how I just designed that fleet for instance all right so we'll leave it there in between episodes I'll look if anything any more corrections need to be done but so that was a planet called Unary I2 we had that one before I knew that message was gonna pop so doesn't really matter. Basically, it's just going to be crime on several of these worlds until we can clear them out. A lot of um, pops are being purged right now. So we do have 129 ancients, and the ancients are the robots, and so they're going to be purged off. Someone also mentioned, actually a rather good point as well, that in the galactic community, there's a vote right now. Or there will be, for advanced Xeno studies. And we're currently in breach of the artificial intelligence policy is being outlawed so i'm gonna pass that i don't think it's gonna affect us too bad we have it outlawed right now synthetics have their free will removed and are unable to perform ruler jobs or specialists we can put them in servitude which allows them to do specialist jobs but just not um ruler jobs i don't think we really have any synthetics though i'd have to double check but we have some robots but not not very many i don't know if that counts as synthetic i thought they were still droids Anyways, so let's check on Opsius' fleet. So he can do a bigger upgrade now. Getting rid of a lot. I think the fleet power is probably going to go down a lot. That would be my guess. Because we're swapping out all of those uh, missiles that can be, you know, destroyed by, by point defense. Man, I am stuttering a lot today. Alright. <clears throat> so hopefully that makes sense. Alright, let's check out where this combat is. As we still traverse through these certain areas. As we make our way back, Fleet upgrades applied. the storms are still ravaging the galaxy. God, it's so laggy. Yes, yeah, so there's the strike craft there. So the strike craft are fighting other oh, strike craft. Good. Because I was just a little bit unsure whether or not they do that. I know that the bombers are probably the ones that go and attack the other ships, and then the, es the not escorts, the um, interceptors are probably the ones that actually fight each other. Alright, the century array is completed. Exactly what technology is housed in the ring that encircles the century array is, close is a closely guarded secret. The results, however, are undeniable. We now have virtually perfect knowledge of all fleet movements in the galaxy. Activates galaxy-wide sensor range. Look at that bad boy. Oh, yes. That looks so good, by the way. Love it. Love the things that animate. All right, nice. So now we can see everything. Which begs the question... There we go. I have to let time play. I was going to say, where is their fleet? There it is right there. So that's the Corinth Restorer's fleet. So many moons. Five of them in total. And then, didn't the Carillions have, like, a planet craft? I'm pretty sure they did. They just have moons as well. 
Not sure where that planet craft was that we saw before. There's a Colossus here. Yeah, I don't know. Can't quite remember where it was. Oh, it's probably down here. Yeah, there it is. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Ancient Behemoth Planet Craft. That thing's gonna be mental. That's insane. Oh my god, the hull points are ridiculous. 8.4 million hull points? Think of how long that thing is gonna be operational before you can take it down. That's what I worry the most about. It's like that thing's gonna snipe our own moons. Probably. Alright, how much of this is back here yet? So some of the Federation stuff has been built now, so we got the carrier triremes just laden with the ironclad flak and the ravaging swarmers. More ships are arriving, the transports, good. So that's just a pretty small amount for now. While we're still building the dreadnoughts, and then we'll have a look at what we're at in terms of fleet capacity. Um, oh yeah, so this guy jumped, he needs to come back, so send you home. He's gonna go to the trap station. Send him there. And then all of these ships need their own little upgrades. And of course the Juggernaut, who could forget? We need to kit that out with something that will give us a nice bonus. We'll have to have a look when we get back. And then over here we've got the two attack moons that are being built. So once these two are done, then we're probably ready to go attack. So a thousand days on the clock. We've got plenty of time as long as they don't get really hyper aggressive. I don't really know what's going on here. Like, they've been sitting on the edge. Like, I don't know why. They're sitting on the edge. There's a neutral fleet of the Veilon cluster in between them. So they're like almost allied with them, but they're not. They're just chilling next to them. You know, I don't know what the goal is. They own the planets here in this system. More of the Belmacosta Creeper gathering. Although, like I said, they're not allied. So a little bit confused as to what's going on there. Oh yeah, the Valon Cluster are actually at war with the Traxian Empire. It's really messy. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. How's this now? We're closing the gap. We've gained about a hundred empires or administrative capacity. There's a lot of us now, gathering big time. We're up to 524,000, so those um, dreadnoughts have been built. So our Federation fleet is already twice the size as it was before. After deleting it and rebuilding. So we're just going to add more to the carriers. I feel like we're just going to need so many carriers. Six of them should be good. So that's going to bring us up to 12 carriers and six dreadnoughts. Now we're losing volatile moats. I've built some stuff to hopefully fix that in future. Construction online. That's one of our attack wounds. All right, cool. Um, do we have any anomalies? We do have this one, and someone is assigned to do it. New technology discovered. He's on his way. Okay, good. All right, new technology. Leader lifespan, another five years added, which is good. So we could go with naval capacity, fleet, command limit, or admin cap. I'm going to go with admin cap just so desperate for it right now, although it is a long time. It's kind of a long time to get anything now. There's no quick text anymore. We're now making 3,000 alloys per month, 3,100 per month. Consumer goods is totally fine. Food is getting little... No, food is totally fine as well. Alloys are fine. Energy cards are fine. I noticed as well, actually, the dynamic core igniter that's out here is at a stage where it actually only costs energy. 4,250. So I think this is going to try and ignite the barren planet that's been built over. Order the Dynamic Core Igniter's crew to begin the large-scale process of reactivating this planet's magnetic field and subsequently implement a breathable atmosphere. Just do it because it's fun. Don't know if we'll ever really need it. The other one that we have is not at the stage. It would cost alloys. And while it is a small amount, 
Every alloy counts for the war effort. Grunurii has rising unemployment. Uh oh. Nine unemployed workers. Kirken pops. Hmm. I'll have to just move them later. I don't want to get into that during this episode. I want to just keep letting time play and keep getting our fleets together, basically. They're on their way back as well. All right, huge amounts of food. <clears throat> Despite the building of several um, ravaging swarms. Online. I love seeing all the ships arrive, it's so cool. Classes three reporting for duty. Almost tempted to remove that fleet. Uh, we could use them later. I have to just find a way to merge these into like one big fleet and then really organize and partition out ships that we just don't need anymore. In fact, yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do. Behemoth Planetcraft construction site built. The construction site for the future Behemoth Planetcraft is now complete. There it is. This original uh, orbital platform will serve as a staging depot in order to begin constructing the planet craft itself. Note, or sorry, now we must start converting the planet below into a massive starship core. Now, don't forget to design the, pl the behemoth planet craft in the ship designer. Oh. We didn't get to do that before. There it is. Oh shit, you can design your own. That's great. Before building it. Rising unemployment on Shariot 3. Increase the benefits. That's just what we're going to do every time. Holy fuck. Oh man. I'd have to do this in between episodes as well. I could be here for quite a while. Planetary hangers. Weaponized crust. Auxiliary weapon... So I can't change these at least. Okay then. It's a little less decision making I suppose. That's pretty cool though. And there it is. Just like the one we saw. I can't zoom in any further. All right, can we blanket clear the design? Yeah, there we go. All right, so planetary missile batteries. There's massive shield penetration. This is shield and armor penetration. 7,000 to... Oh, my God. Why wouldn't you just go with all of these, then? They seem way better. Average damage, 1,500. Average damage, 29,000. Yeah, I'll go with these. Thank you very much. I guess we still need to make power. Planetary core reactor. Level three jump drives. Oh yes. How much power is in, does each one of these take? A lot. <laughs> does it say, am I blind? Accuracy, range. Oh, power usage 65,000. It's right there at the top. 65,000. What kind of power can we generate? Graviton boosters, 150. It's not exactly um, that good. Planetary presence, that's pretty cool. So I guess that's why. You can only really afford to put, maybe put one of these on at best. So there's nothing I can do for extra power generation, no? We have a planetary core reactor, and that's just it. All right, well, let's just, uh, for now, cram out a bunch of these. These actually don't cost power, the planetary missile batteries and stuff. You might be able to get two of them on then, which is kind of cool. What about these? These do cost power. Yeah, I'm going to do this in between because I I'll be here for ages going through all this, but it's, it's nevertheless very, very cool. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get this ready in time for our battle with those guys because it's going to take... How long does it take? 1400 days just to get to the next stage and then there's several other stages. So while it will be good to get going now, I'll just do it in between episodes before we commit to expanding it. Might, might set up another one though, right? Why not get two of them on the run? Yeah, I think we should do that. At least two. So let's have a look for the candidates where we can build another one. Um... Behemoth Planetcraft, so Uplo 1. Uplo 1. Right in the core. That's fine by me. Yeah, 
think this is the right planet. Let's just double check. Sorry, just looking for it. Basically, just going through a list. There we go, found it. All right, got it. Eight and a half thousand alloys. That's fine though. That's a. It's such a forward running, long running project. I think it's good to at least have two. And hopefully we can protect this place. We should start building these things. Okay. All right, good. All right, let's check in on the fleets now. A lot of them are back at Starfield of Mars. The Strategic Coordination Center is now operational. The final additions to the Strategic Coordination Center are, and are several... What? Oh, oh, this is what they are. They are several detached hostile force simulator bastions. These bastions contain much of the functionality of the Strategic Coordination Center on a smaller scale, but are completely independent of the main system. With, within, elite commanders and their staff can become totally immersed in the culture and traditions of our empires. Of our enemies, sorry. God, I can't, my god. I shouldn't record today, I just can't speak and I can't read properly, I'm so sorry, I don't know why. Um, it just happens, every, every, every now and then I just have those days. Anyway, by studying their artwork can better understand and simulate their military thinking. Once fully immersed, they will fight virtual wars against the staff of Strategic Coordination Center, allowing us to stimulate conflicts. Surely that simulate conflicts with any possible enemy in excruciating detail which can then be studied from the perspectives of both sides and our strategies refined upon. Okay, well whatever. It's done now. So we get basically naval capacity, star base capacity, defense platforms, and sublight speed increase. Good. Alright, still waiting on more from the mega shipyard 20 days and another bunch of carriers are going to be made online. so we're going to merge these corvettes here one big fleet put them under opsius again and he can upgrade his 30. Fleet upgraded. it's getting really messy now though these transports can all come together that way just to break them off for a bit send this planet mo attack moon thing out here oh we're at the new year well we did a year actually that's not so bad <laughs> so much organization that has to go into this technology discovered so this cruiser get rid of it what do we have here then Destroyers and Hastadi. Hastadi Corvettes. Gonna break out the Corvettes and attach to here. Join them up with each other. Upgrade as well. So, Opsis is keeping all the Corvettes under his command for now. We then just have 10 destroyers here. Not too sure what we're gonna do with them. Or if we're gonna need them or use them at all. All right, we got the Titanic Dimensional Wave Cannon. Jesus, it's getting ridiculous. It's been getting ridiculous for a long time, to be honest, but there we go. Yeah, let's go with, I still haven't found that Hyperforge yet. That's what I'm waiting for, the Hyperforge. Exploit the resource of Iodizium Crystals. Let's, let's get that then, only eight months. Upgraded. All right, we're at 757,000 fleet power now for our Federation fleet. And let's get Quesos Stertinius on it. There we go. 819,000 now. Excellent. So let's check the... Uh, this thing. So I think it's called... There it is. So we're at 228 out of 320. So we could definitely add more Dreadnoughts. And just, like I said, I'm really doubling up on the uh, carriers. So I, I feel like we need them. So it's 1,400 food, 10,000 alloys, 23 nanites. It's all good. Build what you can.
All right, Senate is now in session for the advanced Xeno studies. We're not in breach of it anymore, so that's good. We've learned a great deal by living in proximity to the wandering forests on Pertinax. Uh, some enterprising colonists have been even built homes in the treetops of some of the larger specimens following the forests around as they migrate across the planet. Some of the foremost biologists in the Roman Empire have spent time studying these unique trees. All right, cool. It's paying off. Great. Still no real crazy activity from them, although they are pushing out. I don't know if they wiped the fleet that was here. It's quite the possibility. I'm not seeing that 80,000 from the uh, Kozier Trade League anymore. I wonder, did they do battle and lose? I could check the logs, I guess. Which one is it? It's the other one. Don't know if it's which way it's organized by time. Battle of Beeroy. This place is called what? Jubilio. Space Battle of Jubilio. Kosher Trade League against the Corinth Restorers, and they lost. <laughs> yeah, so it didn't look like it worked out for them. We gained 1.2 exhaustion. They gained 1. 15 ships lost, it says. Is it there? 15 ships lost? It's in green. It says 0 ships lost for us. Maybe we won, actually. Somehow. I don't know how that's possible. That doesn't seem like it would be correct. It certainly seems the other way around. But okay, maybe I'm reading it wrong. It's just, it said it was green. Which I would have assumed positive. God, the Juggernaut is so incredibly slow. As it moves through these tumultuous systems as well. Hope people don't mind this episode. I know it's slow, we're just gathering things together, but you know, we're building. I mean, we've built a lot into the Federation fleet already, which is great. Online. Combining all of our... ...troops together as well. We've got an insane amount of them. All the transports now. So what do we have here? Assault armies? They can go. Don't need these guys. All right, 164 million legions, legionaries. Our legions are now worth 1 million apiece, and we have 164 million of them, which is totally fine, considering that we have billions of pops across so many worlds of population. Like, I actually really like the numbers that we've gone with. Some people say it's a little high. I don't think so. For a galaxy? I don't think so. But up to you, really. But I, I think we're it's a pretty, pretty good number to go with, like a billion for one for a one worker pop being a billion. I think that's totally reasonable. And then for to make one million troops out of that one billion, I think it's totally reasonable to assume that. I would even say maybe even more. You know, conquering a planet with ten million troops. I don't even know if that is enough, really, to conquer a planet in like a few months. Maybe it is. If you rush the capital. All right. Uh, what else are we making now? Do we, are we still making those things at the shipyard? Yep. So we're still upgrading the Titan ship, Ramus. And then we're doing two triremes. I wonder what we're short on. It's getting pretty short on volatile moats. I have built a bunch of them chemical plants to be taken over, but they need pops. I'll have to move them in between episodes. I'm sure it'll be fine. This can be reinforced. Doesn't say we're lacking anything, do we? We obviously are lacking something. It doesn't seem to be alloys, though. What else would we would we be lacking? I wonder. Um, because we're not even building one dreadnought. Right. Find this out. It's a little tedious. Go here. Federation ship designer dreadnought. Crassus. What does this cost to make? Okay, so 8,000 alloys. Yeah, we have that. 72 moats. We have all that. We have plenty of gases and stuff like that. Nanites? Ah, we're low on nanites. 80 nanites for each one of these. Yeah, so we don't have the... We could buy them, though. Can't we? No, we can't. Not let buy them. Alright, we're just 
hampered by production rates for that. And speaking of, over here, we have now taken that system. Finally. So these nanite worlds can be terraformed. Unfortunately, we can't do anything to get anything out of them. But we can just terraform them into continental worlds. They're very cheap to terraform. They're very quick to terraform. So there'll be three new worlds here. Might as well make three colony ships that can go there. There's no shipyard there. Wow. So, human nova... This is the other thing. There's a bunch of different types of humans that we need to kind of consolidate down as well. So let's have a look at our species while time is playing. Because we could be doing some special projects to upgrade them as well. Bring them into like one group instead of the many, many ones that we have now. So I'm going to apply this template to all of them. It's only two months of engineering. I just don't like having like Please so many different groups. It. it bothers me. It bothers me on a deep fundamental level. Lots of different robots. These need to be applied as well. Continental preference. Yeah, do that. It's only one month as well. Now, where's our humans? Meta-human. What the hell is this? They're inside out. The vital organs of the species are located externally. I don't think so. Maybe. Species enhanced. They've been self-modified. Yeah, I'm not happy about this. Apply this to the meta-humans, please. And to everyone. I have to wait for that one to be done first, don't we? Oh, no, it's already done. Nice. So we're going to get rid of that subspecies, and then we're also going to upgrade the 12 humans that haven't been upgraded yet. So everyone's on the same page. Alright, so we have the Stellar Fusion Manipulation. Come on. Hyperforge. Penrose Sphere Stabilization. Control Ergosphere Harvesting. Oh my god, that is such a throwback. It's been a long time since we had a look at our Penrose Sphere. But we haven't been able to upgrade this to the next phase because we've need needed Controlled Ergosphere Harvesting. And there it is, it's finally triggered. We do also have the Light of Destruction. I'm gonna go with this though. I think this allows us to build a, a ring world around the Penrose Sphere, which has special segments to it, I think. A technological treasure. At first, our science team didn't recognize the wreckage origin due to its damage. So that's the one anomaly we queued up at the beginning of the episode. I don't know if people caught that. Anyway, but it's, it's somewhere in a nebula north of... I can't remember. It's in a nebula, though. Well, I guess we could look. There we go. Rovgedi. It's actually in the middle of Kozier territory. Anyway, it's from Vazarin. So how it ended up in this place remains a mystery. Given that the Vazarins tend to self-destruct disable ships. We've actually had this before, so we'll just skip it. It's fine. Although we do get reverse engineering with it. That's strange. Okay, let's just do it. Hope we don't trigger a second coming of the Vazarin, though. I accidentally toggled that on. There we go. Alrighty, what are we up to now? Not nearly a million fleet power just for the Federation alone. And of course, the Federation pays for itself, so we don't have to worry about that. We're up to 264 out of the 400 allocated to it right now. The Federation itself is building over time nicely. Nothing really we can do about that. We could raise the cohesion level by one. Unlocks the following laws. Vote weight diplomatic and free migration enabled. Don't know if we want free migration. It lowers influence costs if there is pacts and things like that. But all right, let's do medium. Everyone's voting yes for it. We could do high, but we won't be able to sustain the cohesion cost unless they invest into uh, envoys, which they might. I don't know if the AI will. If they add another one and we go back up to 1.4 again, then definitely. Research project concluded. All right, after running multiple experiments, we had this before. So damage to Vazarin's increased, damper field bypass increased, or um, technology option offered. 
we've already got it, so yeah. Must have just been one given to them that they never got the Kozier. It's all good though. Senate's strangely divided on this. I'm surprised. Does almost nothing but good things. Starbase upkeep 15%, is it really that bad? Alright, Tyrenia is having a problem. Online. The old capital of our old enemy. 14 unemployed pops. That's peculiar. How have I let that happen? Um... Hmm. Just trying to think what jobs I could give them. Really, I just need to move them around the world. These guys will never, ever work anything other than slave jobs. Iodizium. Still don't really know what you need to do with Iodizium. It's a huge amount of exotic particles. Iodizium research. It costs one of those crystals and it produces 25 research. Alright. Okay. It's like a double refinement thing. So if I was to go out to Athens, for instance. Which you're building just loads of exotic refineries on. Could do it here. Nah, I don't really want to do it. It's fine. I don't think it's worth it. We have ring worlds that can generate more science than we could ever need. Looking at all the transports, man. That feels good. Uh, maybe we should station them somewhere. That's a lot of upkeep. 100, that's 164 energy. Each one of these guys costs, uh, costs 100 energy, I believe. Let's station them on Sol. Actually, let's put them on Mars. Ready for war. Alright, some of these things are have to be upgraded. What do we have here? Corvettes. No, no. Let's merge you with... The Carillion Regulators have built a science nexus. Crash and burn, Carillion. Crash and burn. <laughs> hey, it's just something we can take off them, right? Assuming we can merge? Ah, no, we're not allowed to merge. So, Nurilga must be full in terms of his fleet right now. Oh yeah, we're over the limit by a lot. I didn't know you could go over it. His one destroyer isn't operational anymore either. So that's what he's rocking. 143 Hastadi. 143 Hastadi fight and the new Valates, which are uh, a little bit not using missiles anymore. Okay, anything else to build? We were short on nanites before, but yeah, we, we can't afford to reinforce any further than that. So we're short four different dreadnoughts. Four dreadnoughts, not different ones. Let's uh, build here. That's done. So, so we still have like 400 naval capacity, so still quite a bit. Our regular fleet, class is one. I feel like we're using stuff we probably don't need anymore. Like the Fluxium battleships, just don't think they're going to be useful. Alright. We don't need you anymore. Let's uh, also check through the fleets in the outliner, see if I've left anything behind, because I feel like at this point I probably have. It's the new year yet again. Alright, we're getting through some time. Not too bad. Which means our moons should be almost ready. Speaking of, we've only got one here. I have to find where the other ones are. Oh my god, it's unemployment on every world. Right, so, Diana's Wrath. It's down there for whatever reason on its own. Send it back up to the field of Mars. For the attack moon up there. Dr uh, Juggernaut's on its way. These just, you know what, just, these can go away as well. This, that was the destroyers. And then the Augusta, which is basically just special ships. We'll leave that alone as well. All right, good. So these are the amount of ships we have. Just really not that many fleets anymore. 
all kind of being consolidated. <clears throat> Let's check in on the two next attack moons that we have. 500 days and 500 days, right? They're the same, basically. So two more attack moons. Once they're done, we may be ready to go. As currently we are up to one point... If we just combine the raw numbers, we're basically up to two million. Yeah, we are. Two million fleet power. And then with all the attack moons. So we've got another attack moon on the way. So this is... That's 2.3. And then that's 2.6. And then another two. Will be 3.2. And we'll be, Yeah. I'm hoping with that, all that fleet power, we're good to go. Let's check out what's going on. I haven't really been paying attention out there. Yeah, they're just stationary. They're so they're one system over from each other. Oh my god, I'd love to see them fight. It'd be such a huge battle. They're just one away from each other. 1.5 million there, and then there's basically 1.5 million here. Just standoff, one system away from each other. But I don't understand, like, why is the AI so borked? You know, if the the Karelian regulators seem to have way more, they could bring up their massive behemoth craft to here and then or to the here and then start really pushing in. Like, why don't they? God damn you. I always think this when you hear things about like, oh, you know, Elon Musk and stuff talking about AI and New I'm sure, you know, I'm sure discovered. it's New I'm sure he knows a lot about it. I studied AI a little bit in college, but it's like, I still feel like we are, we can't even get a video game AI good. And you're thinking about making AI that can think for itself. It's like, okay, come on. Let's get real. Nickel Dyson Beam Tech Chain. Wait, what did we just get? Researched. So we just got the Penrose Sphere Stabilization. Nice. Hmm. Sure, let's do this. Phased hyper hyper energetic <laughs> hyper energetic I can't say that hyper energetic. Yeah, it is. Hyper energetic power capacitors. Alright, let's go. <laughs> and then let's see what we can get here. Extra lifespan yet again, or something a bit cheaper. Geothermal stabilizers. Kinda wanna get these rare techs and the chance that other ones pop up. Let's just do that. Alright, let's stabilize the Penrose Sphere. If we can. Gargantua, it, right? How much is that? 4,000 alloys? I'll spend them for this. This is kind of a special one. Monthly production. So it's going to double its energy output. Oh, crap. That's great. The sphere has been stabilized with special constructs, allowing for more radiation to be contained within the mirror ball without risking an explosion. It therefore generates more energy. Oh, we get this kind of ring around it. All right. I wonder how the, what the infinity, infinity machine is thinking right now. Alright, uh, not that much activity going on in the galaxy, really. Other ally AI um, fleets aren't really moving around either. Also haven't had any planets rebel on me or anything, which is good. I was worried that that might happen, but it seems like we're fine for now. Oh, they backed off. God damn. They're right there. They're at war with each other. They're also at war with me, and they don't push into me either, so I don't know. The broken clock system is almost being fully um, harvested for its resources. I don't think I'm going to land on this. I don't really feel like I want to. Maybe we'll land on it and then one day break that off to be its own. Yeah, that'd be perfect, actually. Just set them up with the ring world, basically get a few pops on the planet already, and then just give it off to a vassal. And that would give them a really strong kind of foundation so they don't fall behind. That might be nice. Because the two areas I was thinking of partitioning would be like down here as much as we can. And then here. And we just kind of reside in our north the way we want. But obviously our gateways would allow us to go around these places fine. And we'll also be in the center. Which would be good as well. I don't know why that's in red. 319 ships here. Still can't get any more of them nanites. Get as many of them as we can. Nothing we can do. Is there no way we can manufacture nanites? Let's check the buildings. Perhaps there's a way. Speaking of nanites, those nanite worlds are built now. Oh, 
I'll have to name these after emperors because that's what we've been doing in the L cluster. And I'll check the planets after we land on them. Okay, so nothing that remarkable here. Not really. Yeah, same with that one. Nothing too remarkable. And then this one. Yep. Nothing that remarkable. So 20 sl slot, 25 size, and 18. So decent sizes, I guess, but nothing too crazy. Don't know if I've got anyone out at Athens. Oh, I do. Okay, good. Uh, assisting research. Just wanted to make sure we had someone. How's Thebes coming along? The administrative buildings are getting better. The bureaucrats are taking charge. We're now only about 200, about 300 admin cap behind our empire sprawl. So that's gotten way better. We've chopped that down immensely. Let's have a look at how much the cost is now. It's at 124%. So yeah, it was 250%. So our cost is increased 124%. It's so not, not nearly as bad. So things are getting faster all the time then. We're sorting everything out. When is that done, by the way, as well? Should be done pretty soon. The uh, behemoth ring will side. 1800 days, not nearly as soon as I thought. Slaves rally on Shariat 3. It's calls for action. Well, I don't know what you want me to do, guys. You're gonna have to move you around. That's about it. You could do with having some pops here, though. Some. I know that there was rulers on Appia. Unemployed ruler. Head out here. You can be a senator or something. Sort the planet out. <laughs> you can do it on his Oh, he's taking the noble job of all the jobs. Let's deprioritize that one. Can we do that? Deprioritize that one. There you go. Now he's a senator. S Oof. Not nearly as good as I, was, I would hope. You're better off actually being a noble. Do whatever you want, man. Ah, he's stuck being a senator now. Yikes. I'll fix it. I'll fix it in between. Don't worry. Fix them all. Well, a lot of these planets actually want to move off them. Some of them I've chosen not to terraform. We're waiting for pops to die and things like that as well. Um, the ancients are down to 63 now. There's over 100 of them at the start. So half of them, I think, have died, which is great. Uh, so those robots have died perishing away. Yeah, I wonder should we change then the Jupiter class to get rid of these Tomahawk things. I think we probably should. Our flagship, because if they're going to be using lots of point defense, that's not going to be very useful, is it? If they can just shoot them. So we'll get rid of this missile core. And we'll just go probably with... Hey, maybe we should just go with more point defense as well. Might be a bit of a waste here. Yeah, we can't use the Ravagers. Could just go with the artillery cores, just fill the crap out of it with more of these things, dark matter launchers and stuff. Uh, I'm trying to find the other one that I was using. What the hell was it? Don't know why I can't find it. It's like the gray goo ones or, or whatever. It's not in this list for me to use. I thought we could use them on the large slot. Oh no, they're they are G slot, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Sorry, I was looking at micro singularity warheads. Okay, then for large slot then. Sorry, I'm just gonna pause time because the game is just constantly chugging. Alright. Uh maybe we could go with these. Extra shield damage to kind of offset what we've lost there. 62 average damage. So 63. Sure, let's go with the Crystal Spear Cannon. We've got lots of them. I never really used them. Loading up heavier on the armor, but then we'll use some extra shields here. Wow, we've actually got more shields than armor. That's crazy. All right, let's see how that goes. Let's do another upgrade. Will the power go up or down making that change? 
All right, and the flagship, or not the flagship, the juggernaut is here. The Imperator. So these things can definitely be upgraded. We've got the level four now. I'll have to do that in between episodes. I'm not going to do that now as well. Yeah, it's just so much to change around all the time. God, it's so micromanagey at this point. Like, ideally, the Titans wouldn't use this stuff either. The Dreadnoughts we've just gotten have an upgrade to this, so that can be upgraded. That's still the... Actually, is that already upgraded? All right, cool. The game keeps freezing as well. God, it's so unstable. And then I have to do the Behemoth Planet Craft. So a lot for me to upgrade, but I think by the next episode... I'll have all those upgrades in place, and it'll just be a matter of accumulating the resources, piling it all together, waiting for the moons to be done, and then moving out. I think that'll be it. Hey, the space storm is gone. Nice. As quickly as it appeared, space storm is completely dissipated. Ship systems will no longer be impaired in those storms. Excellent. Space travel seems to have returned to normal. Good. So there was one here. It's gone now. Great. Well, at least that means getting around a bit faster, at the very least. I'm just trying to upgrade um, Rubicon there. Creator Think Tank. Produces just a small amount of online. physics and uh, or society research. All right, something else we're going to be monitoring when we go to war, when we go into battle, is the Fleet's fleet operations enhanced. doctrine. If we use blue sky, we get a benefit for fighting in home territory. If we use black sky, get a benefit outside, kind of. Um, so that's something I'm going to be lo looking at right before we get into that battle. We're going to switch this well, to whatever we need it to be. Looks like the allies are coming together. Oh no, it's not really. It's the Veilon cluster again. It's so weird that the Traxian Empire at war. Is that a... That must be a battle then up there, actually thinking about it. Sorry, it's the new year again. We're now on 2 4 20 0101. Is there a battle here? I would have thought that these guys would be... Jesus. Is that the... Uh, yeah, that's the planets do that. The moons. I thought they would have been fighting each other. Because they're at war with the Traxian. The Traxian are a vassal of the Corinth. They don't seem to be fighting each other. What a mess. What a mess. Alright, let's uh, one last time have a look at where we're at in terms of strength now. Still can't build more Dreadnoughts. So we in this episode, what we've done largely talked complete filler bullshit the whole time. Hey, Behemoth Planetcraft's construction site is built again. Oh, nice. So now we do have two ready to go. That's awesome, actually. I didn't think we'd get that done nearly as fast. So yeah, before we build that, we want to now upgrade or design these in the ship designer. So that's two behemoth planet crafts we can have ready. Probably it's going to take like 10 years, I imagine, but we'll get them next episode. Still waiting on the two planets down here. Okay, I'll wait to end the episode when this is done. That's two more moons that we'll add to the roster. Hostile fleet present, it's not a big deal. Although, that being said, we do have a fleet out here. Oh, it's our war moon. That's fine, they're still making their way back, which is crazy. I just misclicked them by accident, I'm just going to keep sending them there. Yeah, so by my count, we'll be at 2 point, or 3.2 million, I think, fleet power. Even higher if we can build those extra dreadnoughts and things. And reorganize some of these designs and upgrade. So I think we're coming together nicely, and we're closing the gap. Still now only 200 points away from the bureaucracy. We're very low on moats, I'll have to fix that. We're maxed out on a lot of these things. We have really good influence now again, so I might start thinking about... Um, new building new megastructures. Started. Kind of waiting to get to that stage where we can build the um, Geiger Forge. Alright, Nicole Dyson Beam Tech Chain. Nickel Dyson Beam. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder is that a Colossus weapon thing? Might be. Don't know if we'll ever be able to get it. 
Energy weapon damage 15% though, I'll take that. Hell yeah, let's go. Well, what else do we have actually? Nothing too crazy. Also, this isn't that expensive. Birch World District. Still have the Birch World to do. Obviously, 250,000 minerals are needed for that. That's easy. Establishing colony. All right, our colonies are being settled over in Establishing Epicilla. Oh, this is like a trinary system. Maybe we could do the triumvirs or something like that. Online. Or the tetrarchy. Mm -hmm. Little underwhelming from these guys. I really thought they'd actually go to fight each other. I mean, all that happened is that the Traxian Empire grew this little bit of territory here. But their fleets are kind of just, I don't know, don't know what they're doing really. And then the almost the entire session, these dudes have been stationed just here. They're actually bringing up this Colossus though, I think. I know they have moved it, but they're not moving it right now. And then there's the 700,000 fleet power that's just chilling here. So strange to be in an active war with so many possible targets and just to do nothing. It's like, I guess they're just overwhelmed. Because like these guys are at war with Traxian. Just move in. What are you doing? You know, what are you doing? It's so frustrating. How does this happen where the AI just doesn't decide to do anything? God, it's so crazy to me that you can get stuck in such a loop. It's frustrating as well. All right, hopefully just a couple more days to go and we'll get these couple moons finished. 42 days to go. You can actually see the fleet power of everyone else. So the, it's quite interesting. Actually the Kozier Trade League are at half the fleet power of me. That's kind of a lot. Obviously, that doesn't count the Federation fleet for me. So they're not doing too bad. Maybe they didn't lose their fleet after all. Or if they did, they rebuilt it. 48,000 fleet power there. 12,000 there. The thing is, they could be anywhere. They could be all over the galaxy by this point. Um, yeah, they've only got 4,000 there. 39,000 there, but that belongs to the Pod Privateers. There they go. Oh, there they are. 160,000. Alright, cool. It's kind of nice to see. Yeah, maybe they didn't get completely wrecked. Nanite bombers. Well, where are you getting nanites from? I'd love to know. I would love to know how you built that. Because <laughs> I own the entire elk list and you can't get them anywhere else, as far as I know. Alright, our two moons are ready to go. So I like to see our power has just grown immensely. All right, and they need to make their journey up to here. And that's quite a long distance. And they can't jump. Oh, didn't I say I was building the gateway down here? Oh, I did. I forgot to get it up and running. Ah, I remember seeing the message saying we'd done it, but I just didn't know where it was. They're going to get there faster than this is going to take to build. So that's fine. I'll just let them do their thing then, I guess. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I was I was forward planning it and everything, having it ready. I saw it pop in the episode. And I know I clicked it away, and I was just I remember thinking right after. I was like, I don't know where that is. Yeah, my bad. Oh well, whatever. At least there's a gateway here in case we ever need to come down here in future. But chances of that are pretty low. Although who knows? Thirty years time, rumors are about that there is something out there. And who knows where they might open up. All right, so that is going to have to be it for this episode. So three of our attack moons, which is about a million fleet power, are kind of converging now in the Starfield of Mars. I'm going to go through things, upgrade ship designs, do all of that. And then by the next episode, we're going to just do some final builds. And uh, we should be almost ready to push out, I think. I don't see why not in the next episode, if I'm confident enough. All right, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.